<laughs> I was just pausing. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, nice to see you all, and here's Sue Ellen Peters. Good morning to everybody who found the oomph and the gumption to make it here on the weekend of summer's last hurrah. Even though the weather doesn't seem like right now it's a summer last hurrah, but uh, thank you for all of you who are joining us in person, and thank you so much for all of you who are tuning in from such a wide variety of places, some from clear across the country. So it's really great to have you here, too. Um, I'd like to start by sharing together our mission and vision statement. Oh, no, wait a minute. I have to do something else first. I need to say, well, I did say welcome to all of you here at Unity of Michiana uh, Spiritual Center. But to say that we are a heart-centered, multi-generational, and diverse spiritual community dedicated to the teaching and practicing a positive life approach in our spiritual journey. And our vision is a world united in loving acceptance, celebrating inclusivity, harmony, prosperity, and awakened consciousness. And in that spirit, I will now light our Christ candle, which symbolizes the accepting within that consciousness of that one spirit. going to have just a little bit of a different um, routine today because we have a guest speaker on video whom I'll introduce later, but she's going to do a meditation with her talk. So we've decided to include uh, the opening invocation and the blessing of the prayer box together so that we do also remember those in that prayer box. So before Chrissy brings that forward, I just want to orient you for a minute. I guess since I don't get to do the, the meditation today, I'm going to do a 30-second meditation. I have always loved the Charles Fillmore invocation. And it's easy, I think, to say it out of love and out of memory without really taking it to heart. So it starts off by saying that I'm now in the center of pure being. Just think about that, because you're mostly, I am, in the center of my life as week goes by, and we're very busy. And this, we're, we're always in the presence of pure being. But this is a time when we can celebrate that and amplify it as a community, because we join in that, that energy together, acknowledging that presence, and also acknowledging that we don't come before that presence as a begging or pleading subordinate. 
we come before that presence because we are the presence of pure being inside of us as well as in the universe. So I just want you to really take that to heart and think about it as we say these words. So now I'm going to ask Chrissy to come forward and bring our prayer box because as you say, as I say this blessing, I want you to direct that divine energy to the health and healing and love of all these people, present situations who are included in this prayer box. So everybody settle in for a moment. Close your eyes if you want to or not. Um, take a deep breath. I am now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life. something greater part of something greater than any one of us could ever be we are part of something greater part of something greater than any one of us could ever be We are joined together in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. We are part of something great, part of something greater than any one of us could ever be. something greater part of something greater than any one of us could ever be we are part of something greater something so much greater than any one of us could ever be Something greater, part of something greater than any one of us could ever be, could ever be. Thank you. that essence of pure being that just goes right along. We are now in the presence of pure being. We are part of something greater, so. Of course, yeah. Great mind meld, huh, John? <laughs> Paige Barnes is supposed to be up here now reading the Daily Word, but she's not because I'm going rogue. <laughs> what, what else is this? I was going to do this a minute ago, but I forgot. When I was awake at 3 o'clock this morning, you know, how you just think about stuff then, I thought, you know, we have not... We have not reclaimed our habit 
of the birthday singing and honoring people who have birthdays because it just faded away. Yeah, thank you. It just faded away during the pandemic and we, we weren't together and then we got back together and it just kind of got lost in the shuffle. So I was just thinking that it would be time to reclaim that. So I'm asking, aside from one person I already know about, does anybody else have a birthday in the month of September by any chance? Mary Lou Siebel. All right, so I would like for Mary Lou, I would just let you sit there, Mary Lou, but people can't see you on camera. So would you, can you please come up here and stand beside me? Can we sing to her? Yeah. Chris, you give her an arm, maybe. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mary. Happy birthday to you. Come over here so people can see you. Get over here in the camera. <laughs> God is blessing you now. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you There may be some people that are pushing 91 in this room. <laughs> Can anybody beat 91? No, so okay. Uh, all together they don't match me. I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna say to Terry that she was older than dirt, but Terry uh. told me that was rude. <laughs> so I'm 71 and I've been around here for 35 years and I think I'm older than dirt. So we'll, <laughs> we'll let Mary Lou decide if she, Mary Lou has been in this church forever and ever. She was here when I came. She was active, she was visible, she was loving, she was an integral part of this church. And so I, the thought that came to my mind was, have you ever heard when you were a kid, somebody would say, act your age. For heaven's sake, just <laughs> act your age. Well, Mary Lou, Please do not act your age. Please do not. Oh, she doesn't. And I just bless you. And I love oh, you so much. I love you. Happy birthday. Thank Happy you. Birthday. Happy birthday. Okay, I'm done going rogue now. I'll turn it back over to the person that's supposed to be up here. <laughs> Hello and good morning, everybody. I'm Paige. Good morning. And good morning. I am going to read the daily word for today, September 4th of 2022. And the word is ease. Beholding God in every circumstance helps me know ease. It's easy for me to find God in the glory of a sunrise and in the laughter of children and to feel God's love as I get together with friends and family. Wherever there is wonder, joy, or fellowship, God is surely present. I remember that God is just as surely present when my responsibilities feel overwhelming, when conflict arises in a relationship, or when it feels as though there isn't enough of what I need. If I begin to feel tense, fearful, or frustrated, I remember that wisdom, love, understanding, and strength, all of the divine qualities that live within me, are ready to help me handle any challenge. Assured by my awareness of God's presence, I move with ease and grace through whatever this, this day brings. Those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. Proverbs 133. And here's John Wiseman. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> um, so this, uh, this is one of Daniel Namod's ballads. Uh, and uh, I asked Susan to put up the chorus, so if you guys would sing along, that'd be great. It's a difficult song to sing, but I love the message, so. Should I, should I play it? No. When a child is born in any corner of the world, he may not know its name, but we will love it just the same. 
For in our heart of hearts There's no such thing as fun We can send our love to everyone No matter where they are We will sing from every mountain We will sing over the sea we will sing until the sound of love is ringing loud and clear. We will sing to every nation. We will sing for all of creation. We will sing. We will sing so the world may. So we live and learn what really matters in the end. It isn't what we earn, and it isn't what we spend. It's what we give to someone else from the center of ourselves when we made the choice. To lift our voice, we have lived well. We will sing from every mountain. We will sing over the sea. We will sing until the sound of love is ringing loud and clear. We will sing. For every nation, we will sing the hell of creation. We will sing, we will sing to the world may hear. Sing through the silence in the life of just one child. And you lift it up on humankind. We will sing for every mountain. We will sing over the sea. We will sing to the sound of love is ringing loud and clear. We will sing over. We will sing for all of creation. We will sing. We will sing to the world may I thought I knew every song that Daniel Namud had ever sung, but I didn't know that one, John, and what a gorgeous and beautiful message. So I'm so glad you introduced that to us, yeah. and let's, let's keep on singing it okay. in other future times. It really, it, it, it's a message that just touches my heart. Yeah. Well, I'm up here to introduce today's speaker. I didn't say at the beginning, but I suppose most of you know that Reverend Sandy is on vacation. I've been thinking of her because she's out in Montana, and you know they've been saying it's really hot out there. So, Sandy, I hope you're finding ways to stay cool. So, for the speaker today, we have on audio tape, videotape, uh, a woman from Unity Village who actually is, I'll just tell you who she is, her name's Rachel Simpson. She's the minister of Unity Spiritual Center in Anchorage, Alaska, which I find kind of interesting and exotic. She was ordained in 2013 and has spent her adult life creating and helping others create opportunities for young adults to become more engaged in unity. And isn't that what we really all need and love, some life blood from that young generation into unity? So that's been a focus for her. 
She's worked with teens and preteens at the local, regional, and international levels. She also serves as a member and current chair of the Unity Northwest Region Board. So she's our speaker for the day, and as she finishes, she's going to lead us then in a meditation. So I'm looking forward to hearing her message. My name is Reverend Rachel Simpson, and I'm the minister at Unity Spiritual Center of Anchorage. And today, I wanted to talk to you about affirmations. Most of us want to be more successful and amazing and have all these wonderful things in life. And maybe we desire more health or wealth or prosperity or joy. Whatever it is you want to grow, we have this fabulous tool. It's called Affirmations. My friend Bob is here to help us demonstrate affirmations. So what would you like to affirm more of in your life? Hold on. I have okay. an affirmation. You have an affirmation. Okay. Abundance. More abundance. Excellent. So we have your mind here. So let's put some abundance. Like, I am abundant. I am abundant. Yeah. What's, what's the matter? Oh, there's something in the way? Yeah, it won't go in. What's that? What do you got in there? Oh. Not enough. Not enough. Do you think, oh, well, we might have to do some releasing of that. Would you like to release that thought? I'd love to release that thought. Okay, good. Um, will it fit now, abundance? Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Woo! Awesome. What else would you like to fit in there? Uh, let's see. I would love to fit health. Yes. I th that's one of the most popular things for people to pray for, I think. Health. Yep. And abundance. Yes. So, what do you think about that? Will it fit? Okay. Mm. No. <laughs> What what do you what what is in the way now? What do you think? Oh, sickly. Did you ever hear someone tell you that you were sickly? Yeah, yeah. I yeah? was a sickly child. You ready to let go of that? Yep. Excellent. Will it fit now? Wow, it's awesome. Yeah, anything else? Oh yeah, just wait. Okay. What else would you like to affirm in your life? My favorite, joy. Joy, oh yes. Gosh, I hate when that happens. It's gonna fit. Is there something <laughs> Is there something getting in the way? Here, would you like me to hold your joy here for No. I, okay. I got my joy. Okay. Bad things are coming. I've heard a lot of people say that. They're always waiting for the next bad thing to happen. It's not very helpful. No, it's not. You ready to get rid of it? Chuck it. Chuck it. All right. Now will your joy fit? My joy easily fits. Excellent. Thank you. You're very welcome. So as you see, affirmations, we have these great ideas. I'm going to be more abundant. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be joyful. It's great. The problem is, is we have these things that we've thought that we've either been told are true or we've decided are true, whether it's that we're sickly or there's not enough, not worthy, waiting for the other shoe to drop. You might have heard some of these things before. A space has to be made. See, we have... These, well, I don't know about you, but I have a preferred way to get the places I frequently travel. Just like the pathways you make around wherever you go, right? So our brains are the same way. We have these neuro pathways. Our beliefs are the same way. And they can be about ourselves, like our health, our worthiness, our potential. They can be about those we see consciously 
or unconsciously as different or the other. Those people always fill in the blank. These thoughts can be around the world and the human condition. The world's going to hell in a handbasket. Our neural pathways are the well-traveled routes that may or may not be helpful or efficient. Sometimes they can be things that we don't even realize are in there. I recently visited my hometown. Haven't, I, we moved before I ever drove there, and yet I was able to whoop, drive exactly where I needed to go, even though I haven't lived there in over 20 years. Amazing. The mind is amazing, but it can also be troublesome. And if we don't stop to examine our default programming, all sorts of interesting and maybe not so helpful things can happen. When I was in my late 20s, I sometimes giggled when a friend of mine would do the uh, eyeglass trombone thing. And she said, because she's a little older than me, she'd say, just you wait. When you turn 40, you're going to need glasses. Now, I was a well-traveled Unity student by then, and I was like, no. <laughs> I just said no to that idea. I am not going to need glasses when I turn 40. And guess what? I've passed that line, and I do not need glasses. Whoa! Yeah! So, that is a very simple example of a denial and an affirmation, because I could recognize the idea when it was coming in as it was happening and say no to it before it ever had a chance to sink into my bones. Unfortunately, many of the ideas that we have come from our caregivers and the our environment, and they're a lot more subtle, and they come before we have a chance to realize, like I did, that we don't have to just say, we, they come before we have a chance. <sighs> Our family always gets colds this time of year. People from fill-in-the-blank background are not as good as us. The world is a dangerous place. These are sentiments that grow out, they come out of the experience of someone. However, just like my friend telling me that I need glasses, um, they're not necessarily the truth, the capital T spiritual truth. They are the relative experience of people. And so we use our denials to say from a spiritually grounded place that these things are not true in the absolute realm. From a consciousness of oneness, we know that when we see the adversary as the other, it's at least as much about, ooh, about ourselves and about a delusion of separateness. So we say no. A denial is about saying no to the experience and saying it does not have power of me. Like in the denial that Bob explained, it's saying the experience of being sickly as a child or being said that our family does this or that or the other thing, it's saying no, that is not the truth for me. And maybe... Sometimes we struggle with language. Sometimes we struggle because these things are buried root deep into us. And so maybe you say, you know what? This is no longer my experience. This is not the truth for me. It never was, but I used to think it was. So I'll just move on from that. We'll just move on from that. And if you struggle with the words and how to... You don't have to wordsmith the perfect denial or the perfect affirmation. Start with where you're at. Start with where you're at, and you can just keep working on it. It's okay, because you're just working on your own brain, and as you get clearer on where you're trying to go, you'll probably shift, change it anyway. Emily Cady, one of the foundational writers of Unity, wrote in Lessons in Truth, to affirm anything is to assert positively that it is so, even in the face of all contrary evidence. We may not be able to see how or by our simply affirming a thing to be true, 
a thing that is all human reasoning or sight does not seem to be true at all, that we can bring this thing to pass. But we can compel ourselves to cease all futile quibbling and go to work to prove the rule, even one in his or her own life. So if a denial is clearing out the old root in our brain, the old neural pathway, the old way of seeing or responding to things, an affirmation is putting in new directions. Did you ever start going a different direction and your GPS says, oh, recalculating, poof, and you got a new route? That's what an affirmation does. Of course, an affirmation is also putting in a new destination. And so what she says is that affirmations is a statement of real truth, a capital T truth, a sp the deep spiritual truth beyond all these relative human experiences. And what she says about quibbling is so important because sometimes we find ourselves arguing against an affirmation. Have you ever argued against an affirmation? You're like, I affirm wisdom and grace in this moment, but I always make stupid decisions. <laughs> so don't do that. Just say, hey, I know that every step I take is going to be wiser and better than the, and then the one before and just keep moving. Just keep moving. Don't argue. and Don't go back on yourself. Just keep moving. And if you, you make a little misstep, you just keep moving. So keep crafting. Find an affirmation that you can say with your full heart. Maybe you're not quite there. You say, you know what? I am willing to be wise and graceful. I'm willing to be abundant. I'm ready. Haven't opened the door yet, maybe. If you're not there to open the door, just say, I'm ready to open the door. Whatever it takes. Myrtle Fillmore wrote in How to Let God Help You, you would not think of closing your eyes and walking around saying that you can't see and you don't know where you are going. So why close your eyes to the omniscience by saying, I don't know what to do? Repeatedly affirm that you do know that is the way to make your wisdom work for you and guide you in paths of plenty. So affirm what you do know. Turn away or throw out the not enough. Turn away from sick, poor, bad things always happen ideas. Turn away from the lie that we should be wary of our neighbor and fear the foreigner. Affirm your vibrant life. Affirm your abundance. Affirm your wisdom. Envision a world where everyone has enough and is safe and can thrive and are loved and are free to express themselves as they truly are. Turn away from ideas of things that are you don't know and that are scary. Affirm the truth. Do not put your energy on the lists of the ills. Accept to see where you are called to, to, called to move into action. We have to notice the places where our pathways are causing problems, whether those are in our own mind or in the mind collective consciousness of our world. And when we are in, out of alignment with spiritual truth, then we find the wisdom to affirm through our actions and our prayers what is the thing to do, the world we wish to see. As we move into action, our actions bring forth a world that works for all. We bring forth the things we wish to see while we release the things we deny, we throw out, but we first have to notice that they exist. We do this as an affirmation of the truth of our shared humanity as we step in to embracing not only our own release and growth process, but that of our 
world. So affirmations alone, they can give you a short-term happy. People you like to post positive messages around, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. It's a nice thing to remember. But it's not as effective to only use that tool because we need to hardwire those thoughts into our mind. And we, to do that, we must couple it with denials because we have to change the pathways. So we use the tool of denials along with the power of affirmations to create a whole new world. We will harness an amazingly powerful tool of spiritual transformation. And finally, remember again, you don't have to get it right or perfect. Because see, that's the things you need to deny popping up again. You don't have to get it right or perfect. Just keep going. Just keep going. And so, let us breathe into a meditation, friends. And I invite you to let your body be settled into your chair, whatever's supporting you right now. Allow your shoulders to relax. Allow anything that's going through your mind to just be set aside in this time. And we move our thoughts away from wondering how to get it right and into the heart and the truth of our being, into that which is the divine. We breathe and allow our mind to come back to center whenever we notice we're distracted. Grounded in the truth. Grounded in the truth of our divine inheritance, of our spiritual nature. So we hold love and wisdom and peace and harmony in this space. We breathe into gratitude to remember the capital T truth of who we are. With a few more nice deep breaths, we begin to become aware of the space around us. We notice our body, maybe you wiggle those fingers and toes and stretch. With gratitude and joy, 
we know we release any misbelief and lack and limitation and affirm the abundance and joy that is who we are. We release any belief and lack and limitation and embrace the abundance of joy of who we are. Maybe you would like to say that wherever you are. I release any belief of lack and limitation and embrace the joy and abundance of who I am. And so it is and so we know it to be true from the depths of our being touching every heart in the world, and so it is. Amen. Service a little unusual, so I missed the transition here. You know, it's been 35 years, give or take a little, since I first darkened the door of a Unity Church in Columbus, Ohio. Go Bucks! I didn't go even Bucks, hear. Did they win? Bucks. Did they win? Yeah. That is why I came up here, but I hadn't heard that. But you know, when I when I knew that the message was going to be about affirmations and denials, I thought, well, I know that. What, honey? <laughs> Chrissy's, give me a minute. I thought, I know that. I've been around affirmations and denials. But I do think, Rachel, if you're listening, which I'm sure you're not at the moment, but I'm going to have to go back to that message because I think so many of the things that we think we've learned in unity really have a lot of depth and have a lot of application in ways that we don't even recognize. So uh, if she ever hears this, I'd like to say thank you for that message, Rachel. But now I'm going to move on to the weekly happenings and events coming up. Um, we will be participating in Unity's World Day of Prayer this coming Thursday, which is September 8th. And Reverend Sandy will present a special concluding prayer service at 6.30 in the evening on the 8th, which you may attend in person or through Zoom. And I'm sure that Susan will, as always, send out that Zoom link on the appropriate day. You just can't get around her. No matter what you think you're going to tell her to do, she's like, got that, got that. So anyway. But in the meantime, you can go online to Unity World Headquarters' website to submit a prayer list. Find questions there for reflection and view the World Day of Prayer opening ceremony, live streamed from Unity Village on Wednesday evening, September 7th. You may also fill out a prayer list here at Unity, if you haven't done so already, and they're, they're lying around on all of the chairs with pens nearby, and you put them in the box out in the lobby. Uh, and they will be placed in our World Day of Prayer box 
in the foyer, and on that day, we will hold all of those names and situations in our prayerful consciousness. Next Sunday, September 11th, we'll kick off our new youth education year with a fly-up ceremony. And it's just been so exciting to see the, the new influx of some youth into our congregation and the energy they bring. So next Sunday will be an exciting time to celebrate their presence and the regular youth classes will resume then. Now, I just love this. It's always such a pun, I can't help it. The Wednesday Zoom discussion group is on recess and will resume <laughs> on September 14th. So all you people that do that, you're gonna resume, get with it. Martha McLaughlin is leading a group, you've heard about this before, but the time is coming, the un leading a group from Unity of Michiana to volunteer at the Niles Haunted House. Those volunteers will earn money for Unity by donating their time. To volunteer, you need to attend a general training session, and then when you show up for your time slot, they provide makeup, costumes, suggestions on how to play your role. A group is meeting at Unity at 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, September 6th, to go to a general training together. So you'll, if you want to do that, you'll even have the support of going to the training with friends, and you can all act crazy and scary. To volunteer or ask questions, please contact Martha. And I would say, since she's not here this morning, probably the easiest way is to call up Susan and ask her how to contact Martha. Uh, and now I'd like to call up Chrissy Schmidt for an announcement. So um, I belong to Rotary, and um, I had been active with the Youth Exchange there, and they always called me the Minister of Fun. Yeah. So I am the Minister of Fun today because I am announcing that we are going to gather on September 18th for a church picnic. Okay, I'm going to call it a picnic. <laughs> um, so we are going to meet um, after church out in the parking lot in our on our grassy area. Um, sandwiches will be provided from Jimmy John's. We will include a meat uh, option and a vegetarian option and cookies, uh, chips, and water. Those will all be provided. Um, please feel free. You're welcome to bring your own um, food and beverage if you prefer. Bring your own chair. Um, we will have some chairs out. And um, uh, if you also have any outdoor games, does anybody have a cornhole game or anything that, or croquet? I would love to see if we can do some of that. Um, and then also we have a sign-up list in the foyer, so please be sure to sign up in the foyer or you can let me know so that I can figure out about the food. I hope to see you all on the 18th for some fun. Thank you. Now, Chrissy knows what she's talking about when she talks about fun. I don't know if you know what she has been, a lot of us know, so is it okay if I just mention sure. it? <laughs> Two weeks ago, Chrissy was supposed to jump out of an airplane, but the weather didn't suit. Then this morning, we thought she wasn't going to be here because she was going to jump out of an airplane, and the weather didn't suit. Now, she's never done this before. And she is going to jump out of an airplane up in Michigan City, I think, strapped to the back of somebody who has jumped before. But I'll tell you, what kind of crazy person thinks that it's fun to jump out of an airplane? So let's just pray that Thursday will be her go day. The weather will, will be you know, good before she really thinks too much about what she's doing. So good, good weather and happy landings, honey. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm up here now to talk about a, a serious subject, which is the weekly giving that we do to this congregation and to the world at large. Um, as a reminder, you can give a tithe by going to our website and clicking on the white donate button or by using our app. There's also a basket at the, bank, at the back of the sanctuary where you can place an actual love offering if you're here today and want to do that because we remember that we are the S-O-L-E soul support and the S-O-U-L soul support of our congregation. We're it. So the offerings that we give are vitally important. So now, please join me in the affirmation for our offering. God is my support 
and my abundant supply, I give and receive in freedom and in joy. And this is the flow. Acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed spirit. And one of the ways that we do this is that we share our material wealth with our church community, which enables us to take that spiritual wealth and sometimes actual physical help too, but out into the world, out into our community, out into our nation, and across the planet. So when we share our wealth, we're part of that greater something that's indefinable but always present, that great presence. So just remember that. And I guess this week I would say, if you find yourself feeling stressed or need to be mindful, what if you constantly started to tell yourself, I am now in the presence of pure being and surrounded by the love and light of pure being? What if you said that to yourself several times a day all week and several times a month? Might that change how we all live? Sure, it couldn't hurt me. I'm just speaking for myself. So uh, I just really love that. I'm now in the presence of in pure being. So as we all are together here, and thank you. Thank you out there, too, for all being here. OK, we're ready for our closing song and prayer. Yeah. Yep, let there be peace on earth. So you can stand if you wish, if you're able, if you wish. Yes. over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Go forth. Be present. Be all is well. Thank you.